Welcome to the Holborn Assets Channel. In this series, we look at major events in the history of economics that helped shape the world we live in today. We try and get a good mix from around the world, so if there's a major event that affected economics in your country this week, just let us know. Peter the Great of Russia had a problem at the start of the 18th century. The Great Northern War with Sweden was eating up all of his money. To raise capital, he started by taking control of the markets for salt, vodka, oak and tar. He even went as far as taxing common pastimes and traditions such as bathing, beekeeping and growing a beard. Understandably, the public were not too keen on paying these, so they exploited many of the loopholes in the system. So Peter introduced a simple poll tax, where people were charged per capita rather than by per household. Each peasant had to pay 70 kopecks in cash. It worked well. By 1724, the treasury was six times what it had been in 1680. On the 26th of January, 1710, he published the first state budget, covering these taxes and new tariffs on foreign trade. Today, Russia still has some interesting specific taxes on types of foreign trade. At the start of 2017, they made a move to combat the tech giants such as Google and Facebook and their policy of registering in tax havens. Anyone selling e-content, such as online advertising, games, e-books, hosting services, etc., had to register in an office in Russia, plus pay an additional 18% tax. Uganda became independent from the colonial British in 1962. Idi Amin had risen up through the ranks of the army and soon became commander. But in the late 60s, a rift developed between him and President Milton Obote. On the 25th of January 1971, while Obote was on a trip in Singapore, Amin used the army to take control of the country, telling the people it was to stop the corruption and to hold a new election. This promise lasted about a week before he just declared himself president. In 72, Amin declared the economic war, claiming that the people of Uganda were being robbed by the Asian and European residents. 80,000 Asians, predominantly Indians, were kicked out of the country and their lands and businesses given to Amin supporters, saying it would make many black millionaires. Unfortunately, the new business owners had no experience in the companies they'd been handed, so the economy nosedived. This was really part of a wider problem caused by the British, who had almost no Africans involved in government before independence. So it was no surprise that the industries were mismanaged once they were handed over so suddenly. Amin lasted until 1979, when he was chased out the country and forced to live in exile in Saudi Arabia. Kmart was about 100 years old by the time they filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy protection on the 22nd of January 2002. It was the largest retailer to do this in US history. The department stores sell every kind of household product, from dining sets to TVs to garden furniture. They were famous in the 60s and 70s for their blue light specials, when a blue police siren would go off in an area of the store to announce that a special deal was starting there. But despite being an American institution, they demonstrated that old truth of business. Standing still is going backwards. Kmart didn't try to adapt until it was really too late. Walmart took up the position of rock bottom pricing so Kmart couldn't compete on cost. Then Target started occupying the space as a more high-end store, attracting a lot of middle-class customers. Kmart didn't really have anywhere to turn. They came out of bankruptcy and bought Sears for 11 billion in 2004, but the future doesn't look good for either Sears or Kmart, with more stores closing every year. So, that was the week. Did we miss out anything important? Leave us a comment if you'd like us to make a video on any bit of economics history or on stuff to help you with your day-to-day -day finances too. Suggestions are always welcome. And give us a subscribe. We've always got new videos coming out on the past, present and future of economics, as well as simple advice to help with your personal finances.